Good evening and hello. My name is Darlene Gans Zangara. This is my name sign. Wow, I am very excited to be here and I am honored to be selected as one of the finalists. And of course, I'm also honored to be here speaking to all of you. I'm sure you are curious what I'm going to say and why I have a picture of a tree up there. Today, as I look at America, we face a lot of challenges in our economy. Many organizations are fighting and struggling just to stay alive and to continue to provide services and gain funding. And a lot of people are saying, you know, I don't want you to forget about me and my place. And we're looking at laws and decisions that are being made, and, and every organization is, is struggling through that. And deaf people as well are having to fight for our place in America, our place at Capitol Hill to make sure that we are not overlooked. That's a perfect link to the theme of preserving our past and investing in our future. There have been so many changes in the world over time, but one thing that remains consistent are the trees. A storm can blow through or wind, and the tree remains strong. So I want you to envision a tree, and we're going to call that the NAD tree, okay? Is that good? Cherish our past. You can see in this picture the deep roots of that tree. Roots are very important. The roots are important for the tree, and they're also important to you and to any organization. What do those roots give? They give that tree a reason. They give that tree a foundation. Some, there's something to hold on to, support to continue even through the storms. Let me explain a little bit about who I am and my own roots. I know some of you are thinking, who is Darlene? I'm from Toledo, Ohio. I have deaf parents. I have a very interesting family. My mother went to a school where they signed, and my father went to an oral school. My stepfather, who raised me, was at a residential school for the deaf. So their varied experiences played into my life growing up. We grew up going to the deaf club, and in, because of that, the deaf community also raised me. So I grew up with a strong influence of the deaf community and culture and ASL. And that's the reason I'm here today. I went to school and got my bachelor's degree in deaf education. I later got my master's degree from Gallaudet in counseling with deaf and hard of hearing people. And now I'm working on my PhD and I am thrilled that this fall I will obtain my PhD in leadership change, focusing on leadership and advocacy. I also have 20 years of working experience providing direct services, working in the front lines for systemic change. And in my 20 years of experience, I've had so many different things that have happened that contribute to who I am today. The fact that I'm deaf as a counselor to deaf and hard of hearing people. I was an RID mediator. I have worked in interpreter training programs, training interpreters. I have managed programs to develop curriculum and done a variety of work in our community. I've served on several committees, such as the NAD F3, the Fulton 3 Committee. I've been involved with the Finance Committee and also have served with Deaf Women United for for five years. And now what I'm doing, I'm at TSD 
as the Vice President of Services. I oversee all the programs in six states, or CSD, I'm sorry, the interpreter misunderstood that. I'm at CSD overseeing services for counseling, um, independent living services, and I've also established a small business to give deaf people opportunities to find work and a national camping program as well. I'm responsible for a three million dollar budget and we're all it's not an easy job we are always looking at ways to save money but still continue to run these programs that are muchly needed so I've been working in those financial situations that pretty much sums up my 20 years of experience and that has really prepared me for what's next so let me share with you what my vision is for the future of NAD. Before I do that, though, I forgot one important thing about roots, and that is related to NAD. You know NAD's roots are very strong. Before 1880, there was a group of people like us that were sitting around thinking, well, how do we preserve our language? How do we prever preserve who we are as deaf people? There was so much going on in that area, era and deaf people felt like the society at large was trying to steal our identity. And at that time they thought establishing an organization would be impossible. And then we came to the Milan Conference, which supported, AS, which supported oralism and suppressed ASL. And did you know that there was a gathering of deaf people in Ohio and to discuss all of these issues and those issues sound exactly like what we talk about today. Our rights to ASL. We're concerned about residential schools. We're concerned about getting jobs. We're concerned about equal access to technology. So it's important to look back, more important than ever today, to look back at our roots as the NAD. And look at all those knots in the roots. That makes it strong. A strong body and strong roots contribute to a strong and full and healthy tree. And that, that will indicate our future. That's a good picture of our future. Invest in our future. I have three areas that I feel like NAD needs to focus on. Because our identity is threatened, ASL is in question. Basic rights of babies are discriminated against. How do we preserve and protect this tree that I'm calling NAD tree? You know, if we have a normal tree, that tree needs sunshine and water. But how do we protect and preserve the NAD tree? First is to build financial freedom. Second is progressive advocacy. And third is growing the NAD community. Let me talk a little bit about building financial freedom. That's a very complex job and a task to undertake. It includes a team of people, and there are two ways that we can do that. First, we must look at a variety of financial ventures, not just focus on one place. There are people all over the deaf community who can help us understand better the financial situation, not just general finance, but look at very specific ways that we can gain financial freedom to help our organization survive. We have to look for different opportunities to write grants, to appeal to different states, and even appeal to the federal level. We also need the progressive advocacy, different programs within NAD, partnering with different agencies, working together, exchanging resources and ideas. 
you know, we're not alone. Other organizations are struggling as well. So when we work together, we become stronger. We need a strong donor program. You know, there are people who give to the NAD. So we need to look at how to grow that pool of donors who, and really show our appreciation for those people. There's a reason people want to donate to the NAD, and we want to make sure that we take care of those people also. I'm also thinking about investments related to our finances. We need to be aware of how investments can help our organization. We could create new fee-service business opportunities. There are many ideas I have of things where we could charge for services. If there's an office or a business looking for resources, maybe we could set up some kind of service to provide what they're needing. And look at our operations budget. Is it healthy? Are there ways we can trim and save in this time of hardship? And I always hate that, even at home. It's hard to cut a budget. But that helps us look at what we really value and what's really important to us so that we can put our focus there. And lastly, we really need to just survive through this time. You know, the economy right now is tough. Our president is having a tough time. He's having to cut the budgets here in, in America, and we feel that too. But we're going to get past this time. Okay, the second era area is progressive advocacy. Advocacy is the heart and the spirit of the NAD. And we need to figure out how to really capture that spirit and share it among our members. And NAD has done really wonderful work. But how can we think out of the box? How can we teach you to become stronger advocates yourself? How can we share resources with you so that you can work with us and we can be become more successful as a whole. Another idea is to maybe establish an ad, or, and grow the advocacy center. You know, we have so many hours spent on passing new laws and brainstorming ideas, and I would love to see you members more involved in that effort. We could build a new service program in your own local communities. We also can link current programs together. If there are other organizations that have similar programs, again, if we come together, we will be more strong. There are many groups and many individuals who have different passions. Some just have a passion for children and for educating children. Some have a passion for ASL, for deaf movies, for job opportunities, for youth, for senior citizens. But what do we all have in common? We're deaf. And we have the same linguistic barriers and we have the same cultural experiences that we can bring together and work together so if we can work in one voice, we could make a huge impact. We really need to stand out and show the world who deaf people are, and we can work together in that effort. Third is growing the NAD community. And that ties in with what I've been talking about. You know, we just have a natural tendency to want to be involved with each other. And the NAD is that organization that provides us to be interacting with each other. As members, we really rely on the affiliate chapters to unify us as a group. 
we have the same purposes. And those, those same purposes will strengthen the roots and grow that tree. We all want accessibility and equality. And that leads me to ask you a question. How do we make NAD a household name? I wish I had a magic answer for that, but I don't. It requires internal change. And there are two things that, that happen that will um, inspire that change. One is experience. And another is hearing other stories. I know each of you have your own story of discrimination, of different things that have happened to you. And now we're seeing that shared through vlogs and blogs and other articles. There are so many ways that you can share your story with others. So we're really planting seeds now. And when one seed is planted, that will multiply into more and more. So before you leave today, I want you to just think about this tree. And if you have thought about that, then I've succeeded in speaking to you today. Thank you very much. We're gonna the question is, what qualities make you qualified for the position of CEO at NAD? What qualities do you have, qualifications do you have for the job? I have the passion. That's number one. I have the experience, like I had told you about. And I also have the training. Personality-wise, I'm a very adaptive person. That means when a situation comes up, I can adapt to that. I have a coaching personality as well. I'm very motivated to work with others and share with others. Relating to management, again, in my 20 years of experience I told you about, I have, I have a lot of experience with that. Right now I'm working on my PhD and I've been studying different deaf leaders and from each of those leaders, I've learned something that I've incorporated into my own life and have worked on developing myself as a leader. So I feel like I have a variety of skills and qualifications to understand different people and to relate with a variety of people. I'm a successful communicator and a successful writer, and those things give me the qualifications needed for this position. With the current financial difficulties, explain your strategies to resolve the financial situation we find ourselves in. Before I can solve the financial problem, I need to know exactly where we stand. In some areas, we're off to a great start. Whenever we look at the budget, we can look at that and see where we are right now and then what we need today. Maybe there are some services and programs we can alter, some things that we don't need this very minute that we don't need today. I've written many grants, so we can look at how we can continue to do that. We have a CMP grant that we've had for many years. And I'm thinking, is it time for a change with that? I want to think out of the box. Think about other programs that we can apply for. And I also want to look at some ways to get permanent money, not be too dependent on our loyal sponsors and donors, but also look at fundraisers and different areas of how we can use those funds to invest and have permanent monies coming in. We can also look at the uh, business side of things. I know that in the past, we had a bookstore, and I need to look at that again. But what are some other ideas? My goal is to look at a variety of different ideas and not just put all of our efforts into one particular fundraising idea, but look at a variety of ideas. Regarding Deaf Youth USA, 
how can you use the media to encourage and strengthen the deaf community as it relates to our relationship with their relationship with NAD and how can you make NAD stronger? Wow, the media impact is so very powerful. You know, with Facebook and Twitter and all of the different social networking sites, vlogs, I'm very curious about what people say, so I like to Google different topics, and everything is there. And why wasn't I aware of it before? So I do believe that we need to utilize media, but we also have to be careful about how we project our message. And I realize as the CEO, I would be responsible for that message that we are delivering through media outlets. I saw a vlog made by NAD related with the CEO finalist. And I saw people's comments and understood there were a lot of misunderstandings there, but what a great opportunity to clarify those misunderstandings through vlogs and through leaving comments. And then I also saw positive comments, thanking people for being a good leader. And it made me realize media has so much power and it cannot be ignored. It's definitely something that we'll need to expand on in upcoming years. We're seeing many organizations and many groups using media. And we need to find a way to use it in our own way. And I've talked to some other organizations that are experiencing the same thing. There are groups that are establishing their own organizations, and we need, like, spin-offs from their own organization, and we need to do that. Organizations that will work with NAD, each of those we can align and work together, partner together, and that's very integral to meeting our goals. And one of my qualities is being able to work with others and talk with others and find common ground and find some give and take so that we can benefit each other and again be stronger together. You know, maybe we have something that organization needs and they have something we need. So that's another strategy is building relationships. And we have another question for you. How do you plan to deal with issues of autism as it relates to NAD? That's a good topic. And that topic is very close to my heart. I'm working on my dissertation right now, and it's a very big research paper that I have to complete before I obtain my PhD. And I've been looking at how to talk with hearing people to advance our rights, to allow the deaf community to be heard. And there's one word that keeps coming up, and that's voice. And it seems silly to say voice. It's an oddest word, but concerning how I'm going to deal with that in the NAD, there are so many different issues today and that they're going to come up in the future. My biggest issue is educating other people. Whether that means putting it in the dictionary, fine, let's fight to put it in the dictionary or um, establishing a public awareness campaign. Fine, let's do that. Autism is a big part of our life and we cannot ignore it. And it's a sticky political issue, but I'm not afraid to face those issues. What do you see as NAD's vision for the next 10 years? I envision stability with our finances. I envision transparency. And I envisioned a very informed organization about what is going on in the world and in our community. I see public policy activism. 
I think my main goal would be to provide stability so that we can continue our legacy of work that we have done for all of these years and to continue the work that the team who is working now continue their work. And yes, we will need to make, make changes, but that's the beauty of working within an organization like this and with leadership such as this. Even with changes, we have the same goal. You know, access is there, but discrimination is there also. What? I mean, I'm sorry, discrimination is not there. How would you deal with deaf people of color, and what would your strategy be to involve them in the NAD? We all need to be involved, and that can come through inviting people here, but also going out into the community. I think establishing a, a comfort level among the groups within NAD, identifying and recognizing different groups. And I think if I go out and make myself seen in those groups, then that will improve relationships. Thank you, Darlene. That completes your presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much.